Okay, here's my Yamaha conversion. The uh, just about finished with most of the engine installation and the, the wiring. We'll just walk around here and take a look. Got the dashboard in. I just need to put the screws in to hold the dashboard in and connect the uh, rotor tack display. <clears throat> Radio's done. Gonna have the uh, radio will be right here. Gonna use the push to talk switch on the side of the radio for communication. Um, intercom right here. Somewhere here in this area, I'm gonna maybe up on the top or on the side, I'm gonna put a uh, MP3 player so I can jam out while I'm flying. Got a trim switch right here for uh, pitch trim. This is the ignition switch off on and start. They'll be to the right just like in a car. Have the uh, throttle installed with a uh, a positive stop so we're not stretching the throttle cable. I've run all my fuel lines or excuse me, my uh, electrical wiring. Everything's wrapped in uh, conduit. And uh, it probably would have looked a little better if I had uh, wrapped all of this in one piece rather than three individual bundles, but I wanted to be able to get into it uh, bundle by bundle if I ever need to get in there and, and fix a wire or add something else. Fuel tank is done. And as you can see, uh, the fuel comes from the seat tank up, up above here. Fuel goes in through the top of the seat tank, comes out the bottom. There's two outlets on uh, either side of the uh, the uh, sump here in the bottom of the seat tank. They tee into one line, and then they run down on the other side of the gyrocopter into the inlet on the uh, main tank. This will be my main tank now. This line here is a vent, and this will just vent air back up this line and it follows up along the sight gauge and then it tees it tees in up here on the top of the uh, the sight gauge this is just for venting the bottom tank to make sure that it'll fill up with gas and uh, that it'll vent air um, on the bottom of the main tank I have two outlets and they they run into a set of fuel filters over here I do have a T running between the one outlet here, the back outlet, and the top vent outlet. All that's doing is just giving me a sight gauge so that I know how much gas is in the bottom tank uh, in case I decide to fly with no gas in the seat tank. And as you can see, I'm, I'm nearly full right now. Um, here's my battery box. It's all, everything's black. It's probably hard to see, but this is the battery box that uh, Wayne uh, gave me here off the forum. Uh, Wayne, I really appreciate that. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get in here. I actually have to take the seat bracket here off from the mast and pull all this forward to be able to uh, drop the battery box down a few inches to get the battery out of the box. But that'll be okay. Um, hopefully I don't have to do that very often. I use the back of the battery box to mount the uh, engine's regulator rectifier and then also the solenoid for the starter. There was a quite a bit of wiring with this engine and sat here and thought long and hard about how how can I contain that wiring to make it look halfway decent. I ended up just uh, all kinds of ideas running through my head ended up deciding why not just stuff them in a PVC tube which is what this is a four inch diameter PVC tube. It is a uh, secured to the steel framework of the engine mount and then I have uh, some caps that I uh, recessed some openings here so the wires can come out everything has been uh, smoothed out to where it won't have any sharp edges to rub on everything's loomed this side is pretty much done um, I need, still need to do some work on the other side <laughs> I have a few wires up here that are kind of hanging loose these are just ground wires that need to go to the battery they just they're there for various things um, I think that's for the uh, the Hobbs meter in a panel and then a ground wire for uh, the electric trim and whatnot. <clears throat> I need to run a, a, a ground from the battery to the engine for starting and right now I don't have a cable for that and so I'm, I'm just using a, a set of jumper cables black uh, on the ground wire going just uh, over here to the engine. 
Um, got, got my air filters here. They still need to be oiled. And I'm just not positive I'm going to just clamp them to the carburetors and leave that alone. Or if I may put some kind of a safety wire to tie the three of them together or what. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, this coolant line right here, somehow or another, I must have cut it with a razor knife by accident, but there's a small little tear in the, in the hose. It's got a real, real small drip. So I'm going to replace that hose. I'll probably go to Napa tomorrow and look around and see if I can find some one inch hose with a nice angle in it. Uh, I'm walking around a gyro. Uh, I still need to secure my fuel lines. They, they're not secured quite yet, but they need to be secured um, down here uh, to the motor mount. Um, some standoffs, of course, like, like I said, I need to tidy up the wires coming out of this side. What I'll probably do with these end caps is I'll I'll probably just uh, drill a small hole and use a real short screw and screw these, these uh, lids shut. I want to be able to take those lids off so that if I need to get into the wiring harness I can. So actually a couple fuses in there that uh, you know, may need to change a fuse or whatnot. Um, my uh, shock absorbers, I was worried about clearance. This one here has got plenty of clearance. I have to pull this hose a little bit out of the way to get to that, but that's, that's fine. The other side is going to be a little bit more trouble, and I do have a uh, kit over on the workbench with all the other garbage over there that I can extend the air line on the left side shock, and it very well may have to be done. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty much just about done. I, like I said, I need to hook up the uh, positive for the electric trim, the negative for the electric trim, the negative for the Hobbs meter, and um, all that's good. So let's see whether she'll start up. It hasn't been running a little bit, but let's just see what happens here. All right, that was a that was a cold start, no choke. Started right up. Very little vibration on this motor. Um, I can feel just a slight bit of vibration, but it's not. It's actually about the smoothest engine I've ever felt on an aircraft. We'll see how smooth it is when I put a propeller on it. The uh, the exhaust. I love the way this thing sounds. I've got my dashboard wired up. Um, it's making a bunch of little flashing lights and whatnot. Looks like it's got a, a blue light for a high beam headlights. We don't have any headlights. And it's flashing me a warning that the, uh, the gas tank must be empty. But uh, that fuel gauge is not hooked up to anything, and then of course the miles per hour is not hooked up to anything. 279 miles on this, uh, this display, and she's idling nice and smooth at about, oh, I'd say about 1,200, 1,300 RPMs. And uh, we'll just bring up the speed a little bit. Bring, a, bring the camera to the back. Let's set the camera down for a second.
And that's it. Can't wait to fly it. A couple more days and we'll have her buttoned up.